So it is my joy and my honor and privilege to get to introduce to you today our apostolic elder Steve Fish, who has come to preach here today. Now, yes. So if you're wondering, what is an apostolic elder? Well, that is someone who is, uh, speaks from the outside in. So we as an elder team uh, a couple of years ago sought after someone who could speak into this church, help us to know how to do this, how to work this out, how to come together, how to lay out some plans. Anytime we need help, I call Steve and say, like, please help me. So, And he does, and he's amazing. And Steve Fish comes uh, over to us. He is uh, from Fort Worth. He lives over in Fort Worth. He was the pastor of Convergence Church for many, many years. And Steve Fish handed that church off to one of his sons, who is now leading and pastoring there, and he's still there with his family. But uh, also, one of his other sons, David Fish, is here at the church as well. So what's absolutely amazing is to see a man of integrity, to see uh, someone who is willing to uh, watch God work in the generations. And another thing is that his heart is like our hearts. He is a presence-driven pastor, a presence-driven man. And so it is a great honor to have someone like that come and speak into this church to give wisdom and counsel. And so we're just so thankful. So Steve Fish, please come. Wow. All right. Thank you, Joey. Bless you, man. All right. Yes. What a joy and honor it is to be here with you again at New River. We love this. You guys are family, and it is such an honor to be a part of this. And yes, my claim to fame is that I'm, I'm David Fish's dad <laughs> and Sophie and Theo's granddad. There we go. Most important part there. Wow. Well, God is doing so much. And uh, man, what these are exciting days for New River. You guys are, are you're growing. This is awesome. This is a great problem that you have. You are growing. And, you know, I was just praying. I was down here praying this morning, and I was like, I felt like the Lord said, well, tell them they're pregnant with twins. <laughs> you know? And it's like, you know, you're prepared, and you have the one car seat, and you need two. And you have the one crib, and you need two. And it's a great problem because... The grace of God is here for this season. God's not surprised. He's not caught off guard. And he's been preparing you. And I love it that here at New River, you guys have a leadership team that has been taking steps of faith. You know, back during all the COVID stuff, all these churches were, you know, shutting down and doing all these things. And I was watching your leadership team take steps for growth back then when things didn't look like growth. And now it looks like growth. <laughs> and, and this is so good and, and so exciting. And I, I want to this morning share about a, a church in the New Testament that experienced some rapid growth. And I want to encourage you because you're not only growing in number, you're growing in capacity. And you're growing in grace. And you're going to grow in encounters with God. I believe your greatest encounters with the Lord are still in the future. He's touched you. He's marked you. He's done something in your life. That's why you're here today. But he is still moving. He's moving in your family. And, and these are actually amazing days to be alive. Um, the church all over the world is experiencing incredible harvest. You know, just last year in the Los Angeles area, there was one day where there was a mass baptism of 4,000 people down at Pirate's Cove. It's the largest mass baptism ever in the history of our nation. And that happened just last year. I was talking to a ministry leader just earlier this week, and, 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 and this lady said to me, and they have ministries all over the world, she said, we are seeing double this year what we saw last year. We are seeing twice as many people saved and twice as many people healed. I mean, this is incredible. And God chose us <laughs> to live in a time like this. It, it really is an amazing time. You know, the fastest growing church right now is actually found in Iran. And, and you, I just want to let you know, like you have a lot of family in Iran that, that God is moving all over the earth. And, and in Iran, many of these churches are, 
are actually led by women who used to be prostitutes and they encounter the love and the power of Jesus and they are now pastoring churches. It's incredible. Things are happening that, that people said were impossible. You know, the second fastest growing church right now is in Afghanistan. Indonesia, the largest Muslim nation in the world, is experiencing radical church growth. Iraq, you know, more Muslims have given their lives to Jesus in the last 22 years than in the whole last 1,400 years. And you live in this time. 20 years ago, there were 3,158 people groups with no missionary movement coming to them. And now there are only 144. And in the next three to five years, every single one of those will have some sort of gospel engagement. That's incredible. We are so close to seeing every nation touch with the gospel. There ha- the world has never experienced anything like this before. And in the next 20 years, every tribe and tongue will have some scripture in their language. Isn't that amazing? And and we get to be alive in these days. God chose you for this moment. He could have dropped you into any point in history and God in his wisdom, in his power, in his grace, in his mercy put you right now at this point in history. And this is a, a great time to be here at New River And I want to look at the church at Antioch in the New Testament, one of the most amazing churches really in history and the things that were birthed out of that church. And as you look at the church, it was a church that began because there was a scattering. It says those who were scattered because of the persecution that occurred in connection with Stephen made their way to Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, speaking the word of God to no one except the Jews alone. But then there were some of them from Cyprus and and Cyrene who came to Antioch and began speaking to the Greeks also, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them and a large number who believed turned to the Lord. So this this was a church that was birthed in a time of, of tremendous harvest. It was a time that wasn't the easiest time to be alive. There was persecution for the faith and they were scattered, but out of it, God was birthing and moving and a large number who believed turned to the Lord. And I'm thankful for this house, that this is a house that welcomes the harvest. This is a house that preaches clearly the gospel message of Jesus. This is a house where when you come to it, you're gonna find that something gets on you and that you find yourself telling others about Jesus. This is a place of harvest. It's a place of empowerment. And so it says, when he arrived and he witnessed the grace of God, You could actually see the grace of God on the church that was beginning to be birthed in Antioch. God had marked them with his presence. And I believe that this is a similar house that you have been marked with the grace of God. And the grace and the presence, the fire of his presence is visible (laughs) upon you. His presence is here, and this is a presence house. And so it was a church with a foundation marked by the grace of God. And the grace of God is here with you as you were growing. And so he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and considerable numbers were brought to the Lord. And he left for Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And for an entire year, they met with the church and taught considerable numbers, and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. So here is this tremendous harvest that is coming forth in Antioch, but it wasn't just about getting people into a salvation experience. It was about them growing and becoming all that God had created them to be. And I'm thankful that that is part of the vision 
and what happens at New River. That this is a house where there's going to be like a holy pressure on you to keep growing. (laughs) And you're going to keep being drawn to deeper places in God, but not just deeper and wider. You're gonna get stronger. And so... There we go. It was a church of of solid discipleship, of making disciples, as Jesus said, of of making followers who know how to live and walk and move in the Spirit. So there was at that time some prophets who came down from Jerusalem to Antioch, and one of them named Agabus stood up and began to indicate by the Spirit that that there would certainly be a great famine over all of the world. And this took place in the reign of Claudius. And in the proportion that any of the disciples had means, each of them determined to send a contribution for the relief of the brethren living in Judea. And they did this, sending it in charge of Barnabas and Saul to the the elders. So the Antioch church was a church of, of radical giving. And New River, you guys are a generous house. This is a generous house. This is a church of radical giving. You know, I was talking on with Joey on the phone earlier in the week and just talking about how, you know, you guys took such a large missions offering the other day. It's like like having to like, what do we do? How do we use, how do we be responsible with all of this? And I, and I love that problem. <laughs> and, you know, there's a lot of churches out there that don't have that problem, but this is a generous house. And that generosity creates amazing problems. This is a house of radical giving. So now we look four to five years later after this church called Antioch has been birthed. And it says there were in the church. Can you say in the church? Jesus loves his church. He said in Matthew 16, Verse 18, I say to you that you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church. (laughs) It's his church. He's the head. And he's promised to build it. This is really good news. (laughs) I always thought this is great news for me as a pastor. I'm like, (laughs) we've all had days like, Lord, you promised you would build it. (laughs) Here I am, don't let me get in the way. And so the word, the word, the New Testament word that, was chosen for church, it wasn't a a word that had a Jewish heritage. It was more of a word that had a Roman and a Greek heritage. And it it was about an institution operating in the marketplace with governmental capacity. And the reason I put this here this morning is I want us to realize that we are created to have influence. We're created not just to fill a room, but we're created to fill cities with the presence of God. We're created in whatever arena we go into, we bring the love and the grace of God into that arena. We're not defensive. We're not huddling here trying to make it through, hope we can make it through these hard times. No, we are here to explode out with the power and the grace of God bringing his love, filling the earth with his life and his love and his presence. We are his church, and church is Jesus' idea. And so I always try to make sure that when I talk about the church, that I wanna talk about church in such a way that I know the church is Jesus' bride, and he loves his bride. And he knows what he's doing in his bride all across the earth. He said, I will build it. Church, we will be victorious. We have been chosen by Jesus. He is the head and we are his body. And what we're experiencing here again is not an accident. He has planned it. So church, it doesn't happen alone, it's family. And aren't you glad that we don't have to do this journey alone? Isn't it good that someone is next to you? Look at them and say, hey, I'm glad you're here. (laughs) it's good to have someone next to you. (laughs) All right, so verse one, chapter 13. There were at Antioch in the church prophets and teachers. 
And I, I love this passage because, you know, prophets are the ones, they're out there. They are having visions and hearing the Lord and these things and, and helping us all be more sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is saying. And teachers, they're the ones like, got to be grounded in the word. Got to find it in the word, you know. And sometimes these two are the hardest to really get to work together. <laughs> but at Antioch, prophets and teachers were together in the room, worshiping God together, walking in unity. And I love that about this house, that this is a house of worship in spirit and in truth. And aren't you glad that we don't have to choose whether you're a truth church or a spirit church? We are both in Jesus' name. And we're gonna go where the word of God takes us and we're gonna go where the Holy Spirit takes us and they work together. And I, I love that about this house. And this is an answer of prayer for this region, for God to raise up a house like this. So we see, though, that th this church from Acts chapter 11, they received a prophetic word, but now they've gone from just receiving a prophetic word and receiving a teaching to actually prophets and teachers are in the house. And so see, there's an increase of capacity. There's a growth. And that's what I so want to encourage us with today, that Numerical growth is very obvious. You see it in the room. You see it in the parking lot. <laughs> you see it. But there's much more growth that's happening here. That we are growing in our giftings. And we are growing in what we're going to be able to release and to give away. And there's many of you here that Right now, you're here and you're attending, but a year from now, you may be leading something. You may be leading a small group. Some of you are watching people pray over people, and you're like, well, that's interesting. I haven't seen people pray over people like that. But just watch out. You may be praying for people like that yourself in just a little while. Some of you are watching other people prophesy, and you're like, well, that's interesting. They, they really seem to hear God, and that's kind of encouraging. I've never seen it before like that. But you need to watch out because something's going to get on you, and you're going to find that you actually may be the one giving that encouraging word because we are all increasing in our capacity. And none of us are just attenders. We're all ministers, Jesus chose us and, and, and he called us and he gave us gifts. You have, you have something to give away, something that Jesus inside of you, there's a way that he wants to give his love out through you. And so this was a church of a high level of empowerment. Some of you who've never been out of the country before, you need to get a passport. And you're going to go, and your life is going to be changed. You're going to see Jesus touch people in another culture, and you will never, ever be the same again once that happens to you. And so there's going to be a, a new level of, of empowerment because, because we're all growing, and we're not just growing in number. We're growing in capacity. So say to the person next to you, you're growing You know, <laughs> oh, that felt good. You just prophesied. <laughs> there we go. So we see, you know, we've got the, just an amazing group of people that have gathered in this church. You've got Barnabas. He's an apostolic leader. You've got Simeon from Niger, so, who was probably a black man from Africa. You have Lucius of Cyrene and... Uh, and you, who was a church planter. You have Menaean, who was from Herod's court. So he was from a wealthy background. And you've got all these people and all these different cultures gathering together. And I believe that we are even growing in our capacity to touch different cultures. That this is very much a multi 
multicultural house. And not only a multicultural house, I believe it's a cross-generational house. You know, I love the way that you empower all the generations here. I was looking on your website, and I noticed your, your vacation Bible school with the kids that it's about, we believe God has chosen the next generation to be priests and prophets. I thought, wow, you guys aren't playing games. <laughs> you better watch out. There's some priests and prophets, and they're out to get you. <laughs> And those kids, they don't have a junior Holy Spirit. And they don't have half the stuff that some of us have that we have that the Lord has to work through to get anything out of us. <laughs> That's going to be amazing. And I love that, the vision of this house of touching all the generations. And so Antioch was a, was a church that was like that. And the beauty of the dream of all cultures and races worshiping together, every tribe and tongue and people and nation, it's in your, it's in your destiny in heaven, but may we see it on earth. Worshiping together in the presence of God. So we are growing in our capacity. And then it says, while they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, and I love this at the church at Antioch, the priority out of all the things that they could be doing, these leaders were there worshiping the Lord. And that was first priority. And I'm thankful that at, at New River, this is a church where the presence of God, where worship is not just some kind of afterthought or something we do to prepare for a sermon. No, worship is our calling. And it's first in this culture. And this, this is a presence house. And I love that. You know, the presence of God makes all the difference. When a people in, an, in a community choose to worship God and host his presence, the atmosphere of that city cannot be the same. Because people are inviting the presence of the Lord. And I want to tell you something. His presence, his spirit is more powerful than every other spirit. And the name of Jesus is lifted up above every name and power and rule and authority and dominion. One day I had a group of pastors over to our church and from around the city and we were having lunch in our foyer. And, but while we were having lunch, our house of prayer was going in here and worship was going in here. And this pastor's luncheon was unlike any other I'd ever been to. I'd been to plenty of them. You know, normally you're talking about, well, we baptized this many, we did this, we did that, you know, and you kind of tell all the good things and not the struggles, you know. <laughs> but today something was different. And pastors were sharing their passion and they were crying. I was like, wow, what is happening? And then I realized this is happening because of the worship that's taking place in the sanctuary is pouring out into the foyer. And something happens in a church, something happens in a city when a people are about ministering to the Lord first and hosting his presence my friend Graham Cook used to say, you know, church isn't just about how many people you can get in a room. It's about how much of the glory of God you can host and how much of the glory of God you can release. And so they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, and we are growing in our capacity in worship. We're going to have encounters like we've never had before. We're going to recognize that God is in our midst and there are going to be moments again, you've had them in the past, where in this room you can hardly stand because the presence of God is so strong. And where you see God do things and work miracles that you know that man cannot do that. And there is a, a world out there, there is a, a county out there in Parker County that needs to see Jesus. 
They don't need to see more religion. They need to see the real deal. And people's lives are gonna be changed by the power of God. You know, I, I wanna tell you just a story from a friend of mine, uh, Peter, who pastors in the Denver area. One of his staff members went into a store, and in that store, he saw a guy who was trying to be a woman, and finally he felt from the Holy Spirit, he's like, you're here so you can go talk to this guy. And so he went up and talked to him, and, and the guy was very angry at God. And then he got a, a, what we call a word of knowledge. And he said, well, does the name Greg mean anything to you? And now this guy was trying to be a girl and was claiming that his name is now Gloria. And this guy says, well, does the name Greg mean anything to you? And then the guy gets all like, how'd you know that? That's the name my parents gave me. They didn't really know who I was. And then the guy said to him, he said, well, what would it take for you to believe that when God made you, he didn't make a mistake? And he said, well, it would take a lot. Well, he said, let's pray for it right now. And so the guy begins to pray for him right there in the store. And the guy that he's praying for begins to feel a burning right where he has a tattoo. And he had tattooed the name that, as he was trying to be a woman, that he wanted was Gloria. He had tattooed Gloria right here, but he felt a burning and he looked and it didn't say Gloria anymore, it said Greg. <laughs> I'm telling you, God has miracles stored up for us of things like we've never seen before. There's no shortage of miracles waiting to happen in heaven. And this is a house that's gonna see the miraculous power of God. Not just in the past, but even more, even more in the future. And so a church is arising that knows its primary ministry is to worship God and pursue his presence. And so out of this, the Holy Spirit spoke to them and said, set apart, Paul and Barnabas, for the work to which I've called them. The Lord spoke out of a prayer meeting. It didn't happen out of a strategy meeting. It happened out of a worship gathering. And when God speaks, his words can change everything. Marcy, why don't you come share the, the story of how the Lord spoke, spoke to you and the difference that that made in a nation. This is my wife, Marcy. Can we give her a hand? Hi, guys. So Steve wanted me to share this story. And the point of the story, the point of all of this really is God's been talking to me about it all morning, actually, because, you know, I was in both services. So I was in the first service. And as Steve is preaching, God's talking to me about the whole point is that he cares for people, right? He cares about the hearts of people. So why, when they were ministering to the Lord, did the Holy Spirit say to send these people out? He said that because there were people who needed him, right? And Antioch was a regional church, and New River's a regional church, right? Like there are people all over this region who are starting to hear that, oh, I, I can go to New River and I can encounter Jesus, and I can encounter love. And that's what people are hungry for. And Jesus cares about that. And the whole reason he does all this stuff is because he cares about people, right? And he wants their hearts. So my story is about actually just paying attention to what God says, right? Because we all hear him. And God told me recently, tell people that to know me is to hear me. So I'm telling you, to know God is to hear God. So next time you hear that voice telling you you don't hear God, then what are you gonna say? No, actually, to know God is to hear God. That's your answer, okay? It's simple, done, Jesus did it, so you hear him, okay? So now that we've all in agreement, 
that we hear God. Okay? The, the matter really is, do we pay attention? We hear a lot of voices every day, right? How many of them do we pay attention to? So, pay attention because Holy Spirit's genius. He's really genius. He's brilliant. And he cares about people. And he sends us, whether it's in the store or in a coffee shop or at school or at work or wherever we are, he's genius and he knows how to reach people. And he cares about people, some of whom we don't even know yet. And that's what this story's about. So the short of the story is that I go to Mozambique, Africa every year. I have since 2004. And I was about to go on my normal trip that I go on every summer. And our family went on vacation right before I was about to leave for Africa. So we're at the beach, and I'm walking down to the beach, and there's this deck, and it's covered with flip-flops. Because everybody just leaves their flip-flops on this deck, goes down to the beach, comes back, gets their flip-flops, right? So I'm kind of laughing to myself because I'm thinking I'm about to go to Mozambique. And in Mozambique, if you take your flip-flops off, they will not be there (laughs) when you return. (laughs) And uh, for good reason. So I'm kind of laughing to myself about this moment. And I literally hear... God say to me, I knew it was him because I wouldn't have thought this up on my own. And he said, I want you to ask the people in your church to take their shoes off and I want you to take them to Mozambique. So he didn't ask me, I want you to collect shoes. He didn't tell me, I want you to collect shoes, ask your church to get shoes for you to take to Mozambique. That's not how he said it. He said it, I want you to ask people to take their shoes off and I want you to take them to Mozambique. And that will make more sense in a minute. It didn't make sense to me either. So I'm like, wow, that's interesting. So I just went on, right? And it kept coming back to me. So the next Sunday was the Sunday before I left and I knew God was really actually saying that and meant it. So I'm like, okay, That's wild, but okay. So I get up, I tell this whole story I just told you, and people did it. They took their shoes off. I mean, like the whole platform is like piled with shoes. Like kids took their shoes off. Like our church is in the foyer after the service with bare feet and sock feet. They can't go out to lunch because they have no shoes on. And the whole thing was wild. So <clears throat> now I'm, I'm going, I'm on the way. I have crates of all these shoes. I'm paying all these excess baggage fees <laughs> to get all these shoes on all these flights, right? And I'm like, Lord, like, do you know what I could do with this money that I'm spending on excess baggage fees? And he's like, yeah, but this is what I want to do. I said, okay. So I show up in Mozambique with all these shoes. I get there, and the day I get there, the leader of this ministry is Heidi Baker. Some of you may have heard of her. So Heidi says to me, I need to tell you a story. This is what just happened yesterday. We went to this village, and and this village is infested with sandworms. So this village, all the people, their feet are filled with worms. So she says, we're going on medical outreach tomorrow back to this village and we're going to get these worms out of their feet. And she says to me, it's not going to do any good if they don't have shoes. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I have a story for you. So I tell her the whole story. So the short of it is we load the boxes of shoes onto the trucks and off they go into this village that desperately needed shoes at that moment. Okay, I arrived the day after they discovered this village, the day before they're going on this medical outreach. Like, I could not have orchestrated that on my best day. (laughs) And here's the thing. Now, the shoes that are in that village 
are not just shoes that people went to Walmart and bought. That would have been awesome. But God in his genius knew that now the shoes that are in that village, there's a heart connection. Because these are shoes people bought for themselves and liked enough to wear to church that they took off and sacrificed and sent across the world. And now they are connected to that miracle, to that village, to people they didn't know because he's genius. So that can happen right here. There's somebody right here in this region that needs something and God's gonna tell you to do it and you're gonna think it's crazy, but it's cause he loves people and he cares about people and he's brilliant at knowing how to do it. And I think it's genius that while they were ministering to the Lord, they weren't asking him. They were ministering to the Lord in the Holy Spirit said. So, hey, I think there's a clue in here. If you're like, I'm struggling to hear God minister to the Lord, that's a good plan. And pay attention because he's going to tell you things to do that reach people that we wouldn't even be able to figure out on our best day. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. The same Holy Spirit is still speaking today. The same Holy Spirit is in the room. The same Holy Spirit is inside of you who spoke and said, set apart Paul and Barnabas to the work that I've called them. And part of what I feel like is happening in this season in this house is that sense of I am set apart for this time to do this gifted by God, I believe that sense is increasing that we all know that we are sent by God. You're not an accident. It's not an accident that you're here. You are sent. It's not an accident that you're in your neighborhood. You are sent by the Lord to your neighborhood. And so, and I, I've, I've just been thinking about this a lot about how we have been given gifts from the Lord. And I used to think that the gift was kind of like my gift, but actually the gift that you have been given from the Lord has someone else's name on it that he wants to get the gift to. And so if you handed me this phone and said, give it to David Fish, and I just throw it in my car, after a few weeks, I'm gonna start feeling the way. I'm like, oh yeah, I was supposed to give this to David Fish. I wasn't just supposed to have it. it. It's not a general thing. It's aimed somewhere. <laughs> and what happens as we listen to the Lord and as this increases on us, what, that, what the Antioch Church experienced is you're gonna find yourself that it's, it's gonna go from, well, you know, I might could, talk to somebody in my neighborhood and all of a sudden one day it's going to be I have to go talk to John you it, it you know that you're in that neighborhood to go talk to John that it's not just an accident and so I want us to stand and I, I want to pray over us Lord I thank you for this season I thank you for your hand on this house. And Lord, I thank you that this is a community that ministers to you, that seeks you, and that is set apart. This is a sent community that we are, that you are sent to the neighborhood here and you are sent to the nations. And I just thank you, Father, that the capacity of this house Lord, to touch neighborhoods and nations is increasing. And I thank you for it, Lord. Thank you. Yeah, I just felt um, to just, I felt like the Lord wanted to commission us this morning into a, a new capacity. Because here's the great news, just like my story. 
our greater capacity is not based on our own strength or our own ability to think of things or be more or do more. That's not what it is. The increase of capacity comes from the supernatural working of God. He never intended us to live natural lives. When we are born again, we were born again into supernatural beings. We are meant to live supernatural lives. The way we have increased capacity is we hear Him, we pay attention to Him, we do what He says because He does it in His power and His strength and His brilliance. And recently, there was a young man that went missing. He had a mental breakdown, and he was just wandering around Fort Worth somewhere, and, and, and nobody could find him. A six-year-old little girl, the daughter of our worship pastor, went to her dad and said, Daddy, you need to tell them to look by water. He's by water. And they found him at the water gardens in downtown Fort Worth. A little girl who just heard Holy Spirit had the answer to a problem that affected a person in crisis. That is his capacity. And so right now, I thank you, Jesus, that our increased capacity comes from your unlimited power. You said the same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. You said it in Ephesians 1. So we say we believe you. We believe you right now. And we agree with you that even in our weakness, you give supernatural strength. So right now, I thank you for commissioning us into greater capacity, which means you're commissioning us into the greater grace that you give for our lives that is your supernatural ability to hear and to do what you're saying and doing. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. 